Yashar, Jasher 77. Adakam was 20 years old when he reigned over Mitzrayim. He reigned four years. In the 206th year of Yasharael's going down to Mitzrayim, did Adakam reign over Mitzrayim? But he continued not so long in his reign over Mitzrayim as his fathers had continued their reigns. For Milol, his father, reigned 94 years in Mitzrayim, but he was 10 years sick and died, for he had been wicked before Yahuwah. And all the Mitzrayim called the name of Adakam Pharaoh, like the name of his fathers, as was their custom to do in Mitzrayim. And all the wise men of Pharaoh called the name of Adakam Ahuz, for short is called Ahuz in the Mitzri language. And Adakam was exceedingly ugly, and he was a cubit and a span, and he had a great beard which, which reached to the soles of his feet. And Pharaoh sat upon his father's throne to reign over Mitzrayim. And he conducted the government of Mitzrayim in his wisdom. And while he reigned, he exceeded his father and all the preceding kings in wickedness. And he increased his yoke over the children of Yashar'el. And he went with his servants to Goshen, to the children of Yashar'el. And he strengthened the labor over them. And he said unto them, Complete your work, each day's task. And let not your hands slacken from our work from this day forward as you did in the days of my father. And he placed officers over them from amongst the children of Yashadael. And over these officers he placed taskmasters from amongst his servants. And he placed over them a measure of bricks for them to do according to that number day by day and he turned back and went to Mitzrayim. At that time the taskmasters of Pharaoh ordered the officers of the children of Yashara'el according to the command of Pharaoh saying Thus says Pharaoh do your work each day, and finish your task, and observe the daily measure of bricks. Diminish not anything. And it shall come to pass that if you are deficient in your daily bricks, I will put your young children in their stead. And the taskmasters of Mitzrayim did so in those days, as Pharaoh had ordered them. And whenever any deficiency was found in the children of Yashara'el's measure of their daily bricks, the taskmasters of Pharaoh would go to the women of the children of Yashara'el and take infants of the children of Yashara'el to the number of bricks deficient they would take them by force from their mother's laps and put them in the building instead of the bricks while their fathers and mothers were crying over them and weeping when they heard the weeping voices of their infants in the wall of the building. And the taskmasters 
prevailed over Yashar El, that the Yashal Elim should place their children in the building, so that a man placed his son in the wall and put mortar over him, while his eyes wept over him and his tears ran down upon his child. And the taskmasters of Mitzrayim did so to the babes of Yashara'el for many days. And no one pitied or had compassion over the babes of the children of Yashara'el. And the number of all the children killed in the building was 270. Some whom they had built upon instead of the bricks which had been left deficient by their fathers and some whom they had drawn out dead from the building. And the labor imposed upon the children of Yashadael in the days of Adakam exceeded in hardship that which they performed in the days of his father. And the children of Yashara'el sighed every day on account of their heavy work. For they had said to themselves, Behold, when Pharaoh shall die, his son will rise up and lighten our work. But they increased the latter work more than the former. And the children of Yashara'el sighed at this, and their cry ascended to Elohim on account of their labor. And Elohim heard the voice of the children of Yashara'el and their cry in those days. And Elohim remembered to them his covenant which he had made with Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. And Elohim saw the burden of the children of Yashara'el and their heavy work in those days. And he determined to deliver them. And Moshe, the son of Amram, was still confined in the dungeon in those days in the house of Reuel, the Midyani, and Sipporah, the daughter of Reuel, did support him with food, secretly, day by day. And Moshe was confined in the dungeon, in the house of Reuel, for ten years. And at the end of ten years, which was the first year of the reign of Pharaoh over Mitzrayim in the place of his father, Sipporah said to her father Reuel, No person inquires or seeks after the Ivri man whom you did bind in prison now ten years. Now therefore, if it seem good in your sight, let us send and see whether he is living or dead. But her father knew not that she had supported him. And Reuel, her father, answered and said to her, Has ever such a thing happened, that a man should be shut up in a prison without food for ten years, and that he should live? And Sipporah answered her father, saying, Surely you have heard that the Elohim of the Evrim is great and awful and does wonders for them at all times. He it was who delivered Avraham from Ur of the Kazdim, and Yitzchak from the sword of his father, and Yaakov from the angel of Yahuwah, who wrestled with him at the ford of Yebach. Also, with this man has he done many things. He delivered him from the river 
in Mitzrayim, and from the sword of Pharaoh, and from the children of Cush, so also can he deliver him from famine and make him live. And the thing seemed good in the sight of Reuel, and he did according to the words of his daughter, and he sent to the dungeon to ascertain what became of Moshe. And he saw, and behold, the man Moshe was living in the dungeon, standing upon his feet, praising and praying to the Elohim of his ancestors. And Reuel commanded Moshe to be brought out of the dungeon. So they shaved him and changed his prison garments and rather so they shaved him and he changed his prison garments and ate bread and afterward Moshe went into the garden of Reuel which was behind the house and he there prayed to Yahuwah Elohehu who had done mighty wonders for him. And it was that while he prayed, he looked opposite to him. And behold, a sapphire stick was placed in the ground, which was planted in the midst of the guard then. And he approached the stick, and he looked. And behold, the name of Yahuwah Elohim Sevaot was engraved thereon, written and developed upon the stick. And he read it and stretched forth his hand, and he plucked it like a forest tree from the thicket, and the stick was in his hand. And this is the stick with which all the works of our Elohim were performed after he had created heaven and earth and all the host of them seas rivers and all their fish and when Elohim had driven Adam from the garden of Eden he took the stick in his hand and went and tilled the ground from which he was taken. And the stick came down to Noach and was given to Shem and his descendants until it came into the hand of Avraham the Ivri. And when Avraham had given all he had to his son Yitzchak, he also gave to him this stick. And when Yaakov had fled to Badan Aram, he took it into his hand. And when he returned to his father, he had not left it behind him. Also, when he went down to Mitzrayim, he took it into his hand and gave it to Yosef one portion above his brethren, for Yaakov had taken it by force from his brother Esau. And after the death of Yosef, the nobles of Mitzrayim came into the house of Yosef, and the stick came into the hand of Reuel the Midyani. And when he went out of Mitzrayim, he took it in his hand and planted it in his garden. And all the mighty men of the Canaim tried to pluck it when they endeavored to get Sephora, his daughter, but they were unsuccessful. So that stick remained planted in the garden of Reuel until he came who had a right to it and took it. And when Reuel saw the stick in the hand of Moshe, 
he wondered at it, and he gave him his daughter, Sipporah, for a woman.